hearing none, we'll move forward. And the first on the list is Mayor Joe Ballamer. Did I say that correctly? Uh, from Warsaw and Dennis Falkenberg, but I saw you came in with the lady, so I don't think her name's Dennis. <laughs> And I'm sorry, could you state your name again for the record? Yes. Lori Maupin. Lori Maupin. Okay. She's from Appian Consulting. Okay. Thank you. So the floor is yours. Thank you. I appreciate that. You know, the opportunity to come down today. Um, I'm Mayor Joe Palmer from the city of Warsaw. Again, I'm joined by our consultant, Lori Maupin from Appian Consulting. I am president of the US 30 Coalition, a group of seven counties made up of mayors, County commissioners, planning directors, economic development directors, street department representatives, and industry representatives. We've been formally organized since 2016. In addition to 15 voting members and their proxies, representatives from both LaPorte and Fort Wayne INDOP regularly attend the meetings, as well as MPO planners from MACOC, Region 3, and NERPSI. The focus of the coalition is to advocate for safety amid the increased truck and traffic volumes that have created significant increases in accident rates along the corridor and to develop a seven county corridor wide plan. Currently there are upwards of 30,000 vehicles a day, 20% of them semi trucks. NDOT has projected that to increase to 38,000 cars a day and truck volumes to increase to almost 31% of that by 19, or excuse me, 2038. Accident rates along the corridor have been increasing as well one particular intersection in my community has had 127 accidents in a six year period, and that has increased 50% since 2017. The expansion of the port at Burns Harbor and its multimodal capabilities is an example of the expansion of freight and logistics that will contribute to the increased truck volumes. The coalition meets now monthly, partnering with our consultants, Appian and Senator, former Senator David Long. We have two goals. Advocate for a commitment by NDOT for a long-term permanent solution to a safety problem that will only continue to worsen, which would be a limited access freeway from the Ohio State line to US 49 and Porter County. And number two, assist county level planning groups to meet and develop a focused plan that will address their local needs. A plan that can be presented to NDOT, not a plan that NDOT will present to the community. I know your county has already begun that process. Plans from all seven counties will then be put into a corridor plan. We are now at a critical juncture of lobbying with the governor's office and the legislature for project priority and funding. Specifically, an environmental impact study initiated by the state will signify their commitment to the project. The environmental impact study first needs to be funded at an estimated cost of $15 million. Then it will take approximately two to three years to complete. I've asked Lori to talk just a little bit about the funding, the entire cost of the project, the legislative update, uh, and then somewhat of a timeline for how this project could proceed. So, Lori? Absolutely. Thank you for having me here today. Um, a project this size from the operator to Fort Wayne is certainly not something that we've had for a year. Um, just the environmental impact study would take two to three years to complete, possibly even a couple more years. Then you have right of way acquisition, you've got further design work before construction even starts. Kind of a best case scenario when dealing with a project like this is everything is fell in place tomorrow. It would be about 10 years before construction. So this is a long term planning exercise for everyone. What do you want the future to look like for your community? It's certainly not something that's taking care of your issues today. It's what do, how do we want to thrive in this new community, in this new environment? Um, in addition, NDOT has to find the money for this project. It could be a billion dollars to do a full quarter project. It's not something that you could just start tomorrow and have the money for. So there are projects planning on NDOT's part as well. And that's why we're asking for this environmental impact statement so that everyone knows kind of what we're doing and what, how do you make this community um, grow in, in, with the freeway going through it, um, where are access points, how does the community get that access to the road, and that's what we really want, communities to be able to have that input. 
it was our community input. And I can say, okay, we're going to go straight through and not stop anywhere. And that's not what this road is about. This road is about giving every county a say in how they would benefit them. And so that's why we wanted to start now because it will be a while before we see the finished project. Um, so that's why, uh, as Mayor said, you know, the push is now with the legislature. The legislature has signed a letter uh, requesting the CIS start. We feel like there's a great deal of support for it. They recognize the economic benefits that will come from this project uh, for all of northern Indiana. And so um, we think that now is the time to really make this push. So we know Stark County has been very important, critically supporting um, the U.S. 30 Coalition since its inception. And it's so important that we maintain a unified approach uh, because of that. I think the coalition has been very successful at getting this project recognized at the state level, creating awareness with key stakeholders, including our legislators and businesses along the route. Uh, and again, getting getting the project to the point where I think we're ready to make a push uh, to try and get this project commit get a commitment from the state for the EIS, and, and that's our focus for the next year. Uh, again, I've mentioned that we have hired uh, former state senator David Long. Well, pretty significant position in the Senate. And he will be working with the coalition to uh, try and develop and further those relationships to get that commitment from NDOT. So, obviously, um, we very much appreciate your past and we appreciate your continued support uh, of the Safer US 30. Again, we're at a critical time of making this push for next legislative session to try and get that, that state commitment. Speaking as a mayor, and looking at the safety concerns that, that we've had, uh, our coalition is made up of, of mayors, commissioners, I've read through the list. Uh, safety has, has always been the, the most important thing. Um, and, and I know that <clears throat> if it takes 10, 15 years to get this project done, uh, that's still not going to be quick enough to, to solve the, the safety and accident, increased accident rates we're having in our communities. Um, but we have to work for a long-term solution. I, I know NDOT is proposing some short-term solutions that uh, we are more looking for a commitment for a long-term permanent solution. Uh, and, and again, as, as a mayor, I, I don't want to look at NDOT and say, you know, don't, don't make these short-term fixes because we need those as well. But we need a long-term plan to get this thing done and, and get it done permanently. So, we're here to take questions or to, again, the idea today was to kind of update you all on our progress. Uh, and, and again, thank you again for your past support and, and ask for your continued support for the, the coalition. I do have one question. Um, how, how do you, as the consultant, how do you vision um, this COVID crisis affecting this and the fact that the state stepped into their rainy day fund, I thought, wiping it out? That is uh, certainly something we're watching. I think it's a concern. Um, Indiana so far has been um, able to keep its projects moving forward. Their road projects, they're, they're in a separate fund from the general fund. So any the, well, the rainy day fund at the state level um, is being dipped into. Uh, the, the road projects continue forward. We expect there will be some uh, probably dip in projects at some point. Looking at the numbers, or mm -hmm. at some point. But the numbers that I've seen mm -hmm. as recently as last week, the traffic has rebounded um, back to um, just about half of the event. So we're already seeing uh, traffic come back, which there's a direct correlation between the traffic and the road to the, to the road fund. So, uh, kind of a long answer to say that um, short term, there could be some delays in projects, but since this is a longer term project, and that will continue with their environmental work, their design work with their longer term project, their short term construction. And, and I really appreciate that question because we, you know, as a mayor and as your all commissioners, you know, you're, you're charged with the, the well being of your community and knowing where we're at right now uh, with COVID crisis. Obviously, that's taking precedence to anything we're doing and probably will for several years. 
uh, it, it's been a difficult decision uh, to decide whether or not we just drop this thing or continue on. Uh, I don't think the decision was difficult. I, I, like I said, the momentum we built, uh, hopefully the fact that a, a long-term project uh, will continue being planned for and, and have a continuation. Uh, but we're, we're most sensitive uh, to the, the current conditions. Uh, we just felt that, again, being very respectful of, of what's happening around us, trying to, to navigate that very issue. Obviously the funding is going to be the other part of that. What we're looking for more than anything is, is, is a commitment from the state to move this project forward. And, and at this point, I, I think uh, you know, we're trying to be very respectful of the current conditions to do that. That's, that's a, a very obvious question and an excellent question. Thank you. Any questions, Brian? No, I just know. You know, like Dave Kaswara said, you know, with all the confusion that's going on, it's it's hurt him as far as getting a couple of businesses in over there. You know, by not knowing where we're going with this, and uh, a lot of people in Hamlet, they're they're not for it, right? And you know, we understand that each county is going to have their own needs and plans, and and the idea is. To make those concerns reflected in the in the, in the plan, uh, rather than this project potentially moving forward without uh, a seat at the table, and then not saying this is what we're going to do. That that's really been kind of the focus of the coalition is, you know, yeah, we're advocating for the project uh, on a seven county level, but every one of us are going back to our communities and listening to our constituents, listening to the businesses, listening to agriculture, and trying to come up with a solution that's going to work. And uh, I, I know you all have had some meetings, um, and, and, and that's good because that conversation uh, needs to happen locally uh, and in your communities rather than in dot just deciding, you know, what and how they're going to do it. So um, hopefully, there is some some support that there needs to be a, a community-led uh, planning effort uh, again for a project that's 10 to 15 years down the road. And I would say you know, we sat in with planning meetings in all the various counties, and it will look different in each county. Each county is a different place, and so you know, sometimes um, it may be a direct route. Sometimes it may go around areas. That's where input is needed because you know, we can't say what's best for every county in that you know you should have your input as well so that's why we would like to be part of that aspect. well i think um, we're short one of our members uh today he's uh, in the field <clears throat> so i think what we'd like to do is take your comments under advisement sure. and uh we'll work with our highway superintendent to uh We'll let you know how we will or will not proceed, and, and uh, we appreciate you taking the time to do that. Yeah, again, we're, we're certainly available for any questions either now or in the future. We'd be willing to take your questions by email or even on a Zoom or go to a meeting or mm -hmm. whatever would serve you all the best. And do we have your contact information? Yeah, Rick has all that. Mm -hmm. I can see he's a member of the coalition, Larry Wicker, previously. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, one second here. I got a uh, uh, message my daughter to her bring a check down here. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, let me message her.
Okay, uh, John Kirk with DLZ. Thank you. I wanted to give you this uh, letter of recommendation as part of the bids we took for the courthouse work last Thursday. Um, we had five contractors submit bids. We had uh, three. Good numbers across the board. Uh, the bottom three were interviewed after we received them, and Slokowski uh, contracting out of South Bend was the low bid who completed the most work on our uh, priority list for approximately two hundred ninety-nine thousand five hundred uh, before it would have gone over our, our construction budget of three hundred fifty thousand. So. We then subsequently had a meeting, a uh, Zoom meeting on Friday afternoon with the judges, uh, assistant Kathy, Mike, and Jim. And I think uh, Marty <laughs> got on the call in some way, shape, or form because he heard about it a little bit. But um, there are some items that I think we could uh, maybe go back and look at in order to gain more work completed on the ones that did not. Uh, the consensus, at least from the judge and Kathy, was let's try to get as many of these items taken care of. And there are two different scenarios that we could go into. We could go ahead and sign a contract for the 299500 and then amend the drawings and value engineer those items above that are higher than we'd like to see them by change order. Or we could actually try to work on those numbers now and then have a contract later for the amended change of scope, change of cost. So I would venture Marty would have you know, some input on how he feels about that. Well, how do you feel about that, Marty? Uh, um, it seems like time is really of the essence here. So, I mean, you know, aside from you know, legal procedures could always take long, you know, <laughs> to our stretches that way, too, I guess, right? Um, uh, so uh, I would lean towards uh, trying to get the main part of the project started. And it seemed like the things that you selected, in my opinion, the things you selected for value engineering looked like they wouldn't <clears throat> impede getting the project done. No, and I think that the ones that are um, of concern are mostly with the circuit courtroom, which we can't really start right away anyways for two reasons. We have uh, lead time items on the seating and other things, and then trying to clear the court docket uh, from the backlog from the COVID uh, shutdown. So things like the magistrate's office or some of the flooring and other parts of the uh, third floor, think that they were higher up on the list. Uh, fixing the air handling unit, I think, is primary because we're starting to get into the heating season as soon as I think Tuesday or tomorrow or Wednesday, it's going to be kind of warm again. Um, we got to get that fixed so we can you know, get that plaster repaired in the atrium and all that. But you're right. I think so that would be my inclination. I think also you're, you know, I'm sure the judge has, you know, more valid opinion than myself. But I would think your your idea of trying to get the small courtroom go, you know, ready to go uh, as soon as possible makes sense because uh, a significant portion of the backlog are going to be things that were deemed not essential, and many of those things could be done in the small courtroom, and not going to require a whole lot of space. Mm -hmm. So. And, you know, I mean, that gets, I guess that'd be the practical approach. I don't know if that's really a legal opinion so much as just what seems like the most practical way to handle it. Right. I'm just concerned that um, if we stop and don't sign a contract right now, that we end up having to go ahead and redesign and take time, and then they're going to have to get repricing and all the other stuff as opposed to let's lock in those items that we think are fundamentally correct and, and limited, and there's no real modification to fit finish or whatever and then focus on uh well that they are starting to prepare for that work on the bigger items for the circuit court. I see that. I agree. Yeah I'm comfortable with that. Um, um we had a lengthy conversation about that this project needs to be done. Um the uh, fire protection is is actually outside that budget number. Um, so we can make a decision on that as as well. And um, and for those who don't aren't familiar with it, uh, there's a difference in the design of the fire protection only in the respect of who would provide it, whether it would be a 
non-proprietary type uh, installer who can do things a lot, if we found a lot less expense, a lot less expense than having Johnson Controls slash Simplex mm -hmm. do it. And the county has got Johnson Controls Simplex in some facilities, but they've also had issues with um, service and billing and other things of that nature. And I think Mike and uh... I'm not a fan of their contract. Yes. <laughs> they seem to hold people hostage. You know, well, it's, uh, it's, it's one of the most draconian contracts I, I've run across. We're dealing with government. Which is typically, people, I'm sorry, but typically, many companies have a pretty stock contract with government and any third anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 I, I would like to go forward with this and uh, with his first suggestion that we go ahead and sign the contract and then we try to. Uh, uh, adjust some of those items to incorporate more. One thing we do need to include for sure, I mean, is the seating, the technology upgrades. Mm -hmm. So, but, and it's, it's below this. So, um, we, and this is what it, it would be 369,000 if with the present bid, but we might be able to, yes, yes and, but we might be able to, um, adjust some of these to, get closer to that figure. How do you feel about that, Brian? I agree with you. I'm going to make a motion to award the contract for the 299 and value engineer to try to get down. We can also talk to the council about more money too. Yeah, I'm going to have to. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion with uh, with the Wilkowski construction on the amount of $299,500. And, and I'll second that. <clears throat> um, and then we'll choose um, a fire protection option um, outside of that as well. Sure. Um, do we need to do that now, or do we? No, do we I do think that? we can do that through change order um, okay. to add that. Um, it, it won't be a big deal because the the design doesn't change. It's just who's going to do the work. So that wouldn't have to be real cost. After you do that, no, we'll we'll probably have to well, we've put it through the whole package, so it would go through them just for uh, coordination sake and I think for the, the performance and payment bonds and all that stuff. All right. Insurance, permits. Do you have any questions? Are you okay with that? Okay. okay. Okay, we'll move forward with that contract and uh, we'll talk with Zylokowski. I like Mr. Zylokowski. Uh, it's actually Dave Favors. Oh, I don't know. I just always call him Mr. Zylokowski. <laughs> okay, so then I'll start working. His face changes all the time, but. Right. Uh, yeah. Okay, I will start working on an AIA contract and then send Marty Sway to review it and then we can go from there. Um, then this week I'm hoping to start talking with them about the pricing of some of the other items. Okay. Okay. And we can make a Zoom meeting however you want at that time to, to go through things. But. Okay, that sounds good. And I appreciate all the work and effort you did on this, John. I know it was a little trying and um, uh, this COVID thing uh, got in the middle of it and um, but we appreciate it. And I also want my friends in the middle row there to know that we uh, did use our responsible better ordinance on this particular project so uh, we use it on all of our bidding projects so. okay thank you thank you and i better text the granddaughter because the daughter's not answering She's always on her cell phone, so <laughs> she'll respond. Yes, I'm sure she will. Mark Rippey, treasurer for Stark County Community Services. 
Uh, you want to provide us an explanation? Yes, sir, you can, you're free to come up here. Um, explanation of the services provided. Yeah. Um, going back, prior to the COVID, um, we've been around since 1977, mainly underserved and elderly as we need to buy for food, transportation, um, home maintenance services, and um, we get energy assistance, disco or food pantry. Um, and we're made up of 15 board members, six full time employees. 11 part timers and 20 female here. Um, and going back when the COVID happened in March, we had to make adjustments based on time distance. Our transportation was down because there was not the shifts made, like the methadone clinic went from a weekly to every crewman. So, still serving people, our revenue was cut. We called our employees together and laid off a lot of them. I contacted May 20th, Dean Year with the emergency management. I explained our sanitation procedures, what we were doing, we were compliant. And then three days later, I uh, asked if there was a shutdown, where we would we be? And we were considered a essential service. So we called back our people to end that if they were not working, we would not be eligible for some funding. Um, and then if that was March 20th, then around April, when the uh, government food comes out came in, um, we were contacted um, a couple times when I got involved initially. And um, then when I got involved to answer questions, I contacted Rachel, who has always been right back to me with answers. She cannot answer some of our questions about how the program would work or how it would be funded as far as us. Um, and looking through things, um, people see a lot of money coming into the county and as a board I had questions asked to me which I could not get the answer to which is probably why I'm here today more for answers than anything um, and through the whole thing we were not included in the planning of that and when you look at everything that transpired since COVID um, one of the big things you'll hear in the news is about the supply chain, all right? And with the food delivery program, uh, we've done it twice. The first day um, took three people four and a half hours to service 12 clients and deliver 22 meals. That is not very efficient. In addition to four hours of administrative time that we have to report to Kirsty for the use of the van. Eight and a half hours one day. Um, based on our recommendation, the second day we did it, we delivered 42 meals, served 23 clients in one hour. All right. Here again, we offered to get volunteers, and the question came up of who would deliver the meals and what vehicles. All right. I've worked in Lake County with Meals on Wheels for many years before I moved here. Our own vehicle, no question of insurance, and we delivered meals. We never did get an answer back. And now we have picked up with our normal route. We still have the same amount of employees. Uh, here, transportation, we serve about 180 to 90 people a month. We book over 11,000 miles a month, taking people to doctors, medicine, and food, everything. And um, like I say, 
Community services has been here since 1977. We're dedicated to the county of Stark and people. And we really, really wish that we would have been actively included in a lot of the planning for the COVID aid to the county. Um, and here, um, you've always supported us. And probably it's more the town for the new. Um, the building we have, we also have maintenance which we provide. And the money that we're, we're seeing every year almost doesn't keep up with the needed maintenance. So here, I'm just here to explain why we're here. And thank you for what you brought into the county. But we really feel um, that we could have help more if we would have been involved initially. And um, if we would have gotten more answers to some of the questions presented, I don't feel like you're sitting here in front of me this morning. Well, um, I think that came down uh, quickly. Um, I'm not sure that anybody had, you know, I mean, they were kind of forging new territory here. Right. So, um, as far as a uh, well-defined plan on how to get this done, there wasn't one. We are, we're, we're pioneers here. So uh, we had an opportunity to receive some money from the state in the form of a grant, and we seized upon it um, without knowing if we would get it or we would not get it. Um, we did get it, um, and we quickly responded to it. So. Uh, my apologies to you if you feel you were slighted in any way because we uh, did not include you in the planning because there wasn't much planning to be done. Um, our mission was to uh, feed people that needed uh, food and also to help out our local restaurants who were suffering from not being able to work. Um, so those were our two, um, uh, you know, all too often the restaurants are, are not included in any of the funding that comes right. down. So those were the two things. So, um, it, do you have particular questions well, today that I, you'd I like to ask? Or? What you mean, what you mean. Um, I don't feel slighted in the grant opportunity. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Also, um, other money came in and mm -hmm. When I read the article about a local not for profit, I questioned it. Because we are a local, in my mind, not for profit. Further investigation, I reached out to Jenner Bahachek. His office referred me to Oprah. And Oprah has referred me back to my council. Yes, because That's Oprah that. provides funding for the for the government. Right. They don't provide it till nonprofits, right. I don't believe. So but who administers your money? The county or another not for profit? The county administers the money. They give the money to us. I mean, I guess they administer it, we administer it. So and I believe if I if I understood correctly, we were not to pay another non for profit the way that the thing came down. It, I understood that correctly. Okay. So, I, and I think they ask you to, I mean, we can hash that out. Uh, as, that, I didn't know. I just wanted you to know who we are, number one. We know who you are. What we've been. And so you're clear, it's not the council that gives you the money, it's the commissioners that give you the money. That comes from the commissioner's right. budget, I mean, like which that. the council <laughs> approves, by the way. Um, but that money does come from the commissioners. Oh. So, a question in my mind, like, and it's a gift. I mean, it is not. Oh, a, it's not a requirement. I, I it is a I gift. I'm not arguing that. Mm -hmm. The city and not got money. All mm -hmm. right. Yes, they did. They that money came from Oprah. Yes. And, Same grant. And they pay Kirby to administer. It. We pay in Kirby <coughs> to administer ours too. Uh, yeah. Answer my question. Okay. All right. I just want you to know. And, and, and to be clear, I'm very pleased with uh, the county being able to uh, provide that for our citizens that needed that. So, um, and I think Rachel did an excellent, excellent job on that. Uh, it was kind of given to her uh, without warning. 
and uh, uh, she's an auditor. She's not a social service person, and uh, she did a wonderful, wonderful job with that. And so we're uh, very pleased with that. So uh, we couldn't be prouder of her. So is there anything else you'd like to? No, I just want okay. to let you guys know that we know how to provide the service, which it seems like it was not done as well as it could have been. That well, I, you know, I, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I can't argue that, but I don't, I'm, it's my understanding that you weren't eligible for the grant anyway. Well, it was nothing to do with the grant. Nothing to do with the grant. Not looking for money. I'm just saying that we're here to help. I have board members who question the whole procedure. Well, and you if know, yeah. the question that we were asked a month ago, we would have gotten an answer instead of I don't know. I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have well, known. It, I will say it was disappointing know. that uh, we could not get help from community services with such a with with the program. So. Uh, we were all very disappointed that um, uh, we did not get much help from from your organization. We didn't know what we were getting. Nobody shared with us what you needed, or we wouldn't have done it. I reached out. I can get volunteers. I can get food going. And we never got a call back. So maybe the communication from you to us to there was not there. And I'm sorry that you're disappointed in us because well, we're here to help. You didn't have enough bands and stuff to get the thing taken care of. Something was not communicated properly to you. I was also told it had to be a county vehicle, and I know food was delivered by people in their personal vehicle. They, they, for the record, I they were. They, Oh, I the on second it. day that I gave them their spreadsheet of deliveries, they contacted me and said they would no longer like to do this. So, and they did tell me they could not use their employees or their van, but they could possibly get a, one or two of their own volunteers with their own personal vehicle, not their the community services vehicles. So that's when we had to go through our insurance to see if we could even do that. So they did deny using their own vehicles for the delivery. Sometimes that's a touchy situation I, when I, you're using your own vehicles for, for yeah. county business. Well, and, uh, that's fine. I understand that with the county program now, and that is why Rachel may have said that, but that could have been explained at that time. So I think there's a big communication there. And I'm sorry to disappoint in this, but we're going to help. We got one more thing. I delivered about five or six days of that. There was sometimes I had 40 of them. It was only me and one other person. Right. And we had it done usually by 1.30. We started about 9.30 by 1.30. We're done. All right. I know it's tough finding your way around the county sometimes. Um, I think the biggest thing when we had a long day was a cool place was a lunch from bathroom. I did that. I went to uh, North Delta and picked up at the uh, uh, whatever the Irish pub one morning over there. I ain't even had to help box the, the meals uh, over there. Uh, got to do it. Then the coons I can't correct it. Same difference. Part, of, part of that, again, was not just to feed folks uh, because that was that was a big, although that is, but we wanted to provide some financial support to our local restaurants that often they I don't know that they have ever gotten any kind of financial support. They never so, have. I know that. I like those little mom and pop shops. I like being able to go to the restaurant and get a cup of coffee and a dinner sometimes. I don't feel like eating them. Mm -hmm. Just for the record, too, I'd like to make, make it clear that substantial funding came from OPRA under their COVID-19 fast response program, but also the Community Foundation right. provided substantial, even actually a larger amount of yeah. funding. Uh, so. That was, that was the not for profit. They were funding it. They were funding it. That's the thing. I understand that. Right. I just wish we would have known this a month ago. I, I, you know, honestly, there was contacts made. I, just, I guess I've got to tell you that there were contacts made and I could document if you, if you see what you need them. Okay. Right. There were plenty, maybe not with you, but there were with your organization. Yeah, I know. Okay. Right. So I don't want it to be said here that 
that you weren't the organization wasn't contacted it was. Um yes we were, but we never got an answer. I'm sorry. Uh, I did not even assume that. So what exactly is your question? I mean I it was more I'm advocating for who we are. And I wish there would have been more communication, thought, or structure in the past that we were seeing. And we can go back and forth. I love you guys for what you brought in the county. We are a board, we volunteer, and day in, day out, we're helping before COVID. We'll be here during it and after. So I guess I'm here more of an advocate. Okay. okay. If if you have anything to add today, or okay, thank no. you so much, Mr. Ricky, uh, for coming you. today. Thank you. Um, it quotes for the security camera. Is it here? Richard, here. Yes, I'm online. Oh, okay. Um, we have some revised quotes from Vermillion. Um. Uh, one is for the upgrade to the memory uh, uh, of, at the courthouse security cameras for $2,788. And the other one is, what is this 15? Oh, no, wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. The upgrades to the security cameras are $15,619. And then there is a uh, uh, quote for a camera, which actually belongs to uh, the uh, memorial project for the um, Veterans Memorial Fund, which will be paid for from that fund. And I think I've already conveyed to the uh, Vermilion, to the rep that wrote this up, that the, the, uh, the, that would be paid for by, we accepted it, and that would be paid for by the uh, Monument Committee. So that means that um, the county, rather than 95,000, is looking at $15,619 to upgrade the memory. And he said that will be sufficient for us at this time. And we can, and that includes labor and installation. It also includes the uh, courtesy discount that they had previously discussed with us. And um, that will, uh, we can add cameras to that down the road as we can afford them. And uh, this will take care of what we need for the time being. I guess great. It's, you know, you said 90, 95,000, yeah. 15,000. Yeah. Take care of it. Yeah. Uh, do we have a motion to yes. accept this uh, contract with Vermillion for the security camera? Um, I second that. Okay. And um, uh, we need to pay for that through QCAP. Okay. That's going to be paid for from the Veterans Fund. And I already told him, and I already contacted uh, the NICF about getting a check. So um, I got to complete their paperwork and their process. <clears throat> No, that's my file too. Oh, okay. Charlie's file is Charlie way down, 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 down here. So that's why you'll see, that's why I get it just three months since we've been gone. So this is from March 1st to May 30th. Well, right. Um, so the run volume was pretty consistent, obviously. It was a little bit lower than normally per month if you sign up. I think it ended up to be like 150, you know, 150 something. But 
as we know during that time period, like I was going to test, people just didn't call the ambulance unless they, you know, unless it's here. So that's right, I mean, it was right. good. So we're, uh, like I said, IT was great. They set me up at home. So we're totally built up as of Friday. Awesome. So there's nothing behind. Now, the processing, I can tell that the money's coming in a little bit slower because obviously where it went. Now, not the Medicare, anything electric, because I can do that from home. So I said it, but I had to come in here and print 1500 and stuff. So, um, you can see our volume for, you know, the percentage of what we did through the hospital was still 36%. So, I mean, they, they use this obviously a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, if you flip the page, um, see the revenue was down for the, for the three month total. It was down. What I compared it to was the three month total from last year at this time. So, um, March, April, and May. But if you look at what we generated, like in January, February, when we were running normal, we're really only like 14,000 down from last year at May 31st. Okay. And there's more money coming. You know, I mean, it's uh, the process coming in is a little bit slower. Anything that wasn't electric. Anything that was paper, you know, might have had a lag because I did it at home, but I had to come here and print the 1500 because I didn't have a printer at home. If I would have known, I would have bought a printer, but I didn't. Do so. so I, I think we're still doing well. I mean, yes, but we are completely up to date, you know, with billing and everything. So. Well, I never would. There's never any doubt in my mind. You keep everything up to date, here, <laughs> Aaron, So, um, good job. Here's um, what we collected from the two. Um, collection agencies in the last three months. Okay, for the record, um, there is $2,281.55 from Small Claims Court and $852.31 from O'Hara Collection Agency for a total of uh, $3,133.86. So, um, and the only other thing that I want to mention is that I did finish when I, we were back in here and I had worked on it was I submitted the um, 2019 Medicaid cost report. That's that big report that we get that extra little bit of money, just like the hospital used to, to mm -hmm. offset Medicaid. So that's all turned in and everything. So oh, that was awesome. just the 31st. It had to be in by May 31st. So okay, yeah. great, great, great. Um, so the only other thing, oh, uh, Rachel, I'll give you this because I printed off another one. So if you're going to get Charlie papers to sign, I'll let him originally sign because I sent this in with just his type signature, remember, mm -hmm. like we did, but, so. You think they're going to require an emergency? I, I'm sure they're going to require one yeah. eventually, but I just wanted to get it sent in timely, so I sent it in with everything. So if you want it over here, yeah. okay, so this is Charlie this time. That's this thing. It's got its type name, but they want a signature. That's all I have. Okie doke. Um, so for my report, operation-wise, we continue to run smoothly with the four ambulances, uh, 12 hours a day, three. 24 hour trucks, uh, not so much in Grogertown. Personnel, we continue to operate a full staff with no vacancies. We have not hired any part time staff since the pandemic has started, and we seem to be uh, moving along great with that. Um, we did just recently have a part time EMT that tested out for her paramedic exam, so she did her skills exam, um, luckily, right before all this pandemic stuff started. Um, and then she just took her written exam and passed that as well. So she's in the orientation uh, phase right now, trying to get her up to our protocols, um, some different things that we test out on with the ventilator, with the hospital, all those things to make sure she's okay as a paramedic in our system. Um, training wise, as you can imagine, the in-person training has been really difficult uh, with the current situation. So to practice hands-on things, it's been difficult. We've been doing more virtual training, holding our audit review, which is starting here in just a little bit. Um, we're holding that virtually with the hospital right now. We've obviously been training on COVID-19 related procedures and bloodborne pathogen reviews. Uh, continue to keep our crews safe by doing that. Um, I know there's some rumors floating around and stuff too, but there's no positive crew members that we have. Um, we've been up to date on all that, making sure everybody's temperature is tested. Um, every shift, matter of fact, every 12 hours, we send a log to the hospital. Um, sorry, I keep kind of slipping off. Uh, <laughs> so there's no crew members that are positive for COVID-19. And we're keeping a very close eye on that, obviously, with hand hygiene, uh, wearing masks when, when available, things like that. Uh, we are fine on PPE right now. Um, PPE-wise, you'll see a long list of thank yous that I have in the next page. Um, we've got those from donations from the state, um, from Jay, from Frank. Um, but we're doing okay with PPE. We did have to buy some gowns initially um, from the local 
place in Bremen that manufactures cars typically, car seats, upholstery type stuff. Um, so everything's fine as far as PPE goes. Uh, safety wise, we had an injury free month, uh, actually the last few months that we haven't met in person here. They've been great there. Uh, we've been getting our trucks in for regular ambulance maintenance. Uh, we've also had uh, Medic 5 aligned at full alignment or yeah, that total alignment and batteries were replaced in 086, our spare unit. Otherwise, no major issues there. Um, base maintenance wise, we've had no major base maintenance issues there. Obviously, we're just in lawn mowing season, so that's really the only thing getting paid out of that uh, category right now. Um, I did recently have a someone come in to see if we could switch from those like T8 bulbs that, um, you know, use a lot of energy, switch to LED type bulbs. Um, and actually the price didn't come in too bad. So I'm going to search on some grants and stuff to try to upgrade that. Uh, for LEDs, it's like 94 in all three bases. Uh, it'll end up being under $1,000 for to switch everything in all three bases. So really there's a cost up front, but as you know, it's going to last a lot longer and be conserving. So I'm going to talk to NIPSCO or AMC, see about rebates and things like that. Um, so that, that kind of fell on the base maintenance line there too. That's labor and bulbs and everything? Yes. For, yep. for a grand, yep. they'll do all three? No, that's not, yes, all three. Now, if that's not switching out uh, ballasts and stuff, it's switching to an LED bulb. Yeah. Well, so that's that's great. And then power be, packs. Buddy, if I give me a trick, but you don't you don't even use a ballast anymore. Yeah. Just use a new LED bulb, ballast is gone. Yep. That's, so, that's pretty much what it is. And, yep. Yeah. So he, so he gave great government on. pricing. Yeah, he gave great government pricing, and then also the outdoor light that we have above the garage doors for nighttime, obviously. Those are uh, very energy not yeah. efficient. So to switch those to LED, too, that's also involved in the price. For less than a thousand bucks a month, man, that's a good, good deal. So we're going to explore that a little bit more. Um, grant update. You saved that first year. No kidding. Yeah. You know, oh, absolutely. Probably. Absolutely. So that's something I'm working on right now. Uh, grant update. Uh, we've received a new ambulance stretcher that... Uh, the Hardesty Memorial Fund helped us uh, purchase. Uh, the newest cot is now in service at Medic One at our North Judson base. We'll continue to search more grant opportunities in the future. Uh, a lot of the grant funding for equipment has kind of came to a halt um, and more focused towards PPE, obvious, obviously. Um, protocol updates, too. I, I didn't include that down here. I just kind of ruined it for later. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know, too, that we're not changing any type of cardiac arrest protocol. You hear those rumors of New York. You know, you get called to a cardiac arrest and they're not working the patient, anything like that. There's no changes there. We're still doing that. Obviously, we're keeping up our PPE protocols to protect ourselves and others. But um, we've included the intubation boxes. We're doing breathing treatments outside if we can. We're having the patient come outside. Um, and, you know, if there's any type of breathing situations, we have dispatch. I thank them for trying to screen these calls out. We're trying to convince people, too, if they don't really need to go to the hospital, what's not. So we've. We're really changing procedures that way, um, but other than that, there's really no uh, protocol changes as far as how we treat our patients. Uh, just a quick thank you. I've got quite a few people here. Um, wanted to extend a thank you to Frank Lynch, our county health nurse. He's been great to bounce some ideas off of and kind of keep me up to date with CDC, what the state and local places are saying. Um, Jane here, she's the EMA director. She's been great to work with, helping us get some PPE in. Um, EMS coordinator Dale Lamb and our medical director, uh, Dr. Joseph Maravich, they've all been great as well. Um, again, just talking about policy updates, temperature changes, just anything. Um, and initially it was, a, it was a lot of work, but right now we got everything leveled up. So I just wanted to thank those people. I wanted to thank the county commissioners and council for having our back and allowing us, you know, to use some of those grant funds to help fund proper PPE to make sure our crew members are safe. Kathy's been great as far as sending email links um, for different grants to explore and stuff for our service. Uh, we've had several meals provided to our crews in the recent pandemic. Sark Hospital served pizza and breadsticks with personal solid. Uh, our first choice insurance company in North Judson and our uh, workman's comp insurance carrier Bliss McKnight provided Mexico Lindo. Mary Lynn and Bush Ritchie, our office manager here, they provided meals from 1056 Brewing Company. We had 28 ribeye steaks uh, that were provided for our crew members from a North Southern fireman and his family. The family Dollar here in Knox provided Reese's and other candy bars for on-duty crews. I provided cookout food for our crews as well, um, as well as meals from our local businesses. And I think I heard Kathy mention that earlier, just trying to support them as well, um, make sure they're taken care of. Finger Hut Bakery, uh, they donated donuts for our crews. 
Stark Hospital again provided our crews with uh, breakfast for EMS week, which is May 17th to May 23rd. PPE donations, I want to thank Dr. Reichert um, and Dr. Ratliff from Knox Community Schools and the Graphic Arts Department. Knox Graphic uh, Arts donated 40 face shields that were made with their 3D printers. Uh, the school also donated multiple N95 masks, gowns, safety glasses, gloves, and surgical masks. And that came at a great time because at the time that they reached out to me, there was a 22 week back order of gloves and they had a huge stockpile of gloves that uh, were non latex. We had a lot of latex allergies and things, so that was fantastic. Um, Eric Waffle and Waffle Farms uh, in North Judson donated 40 N95 masks, and his mother in law donated 30 cloth masks that she made. Uh, we've had cloth masks made by Calvary Baptist Church, uh, Chamber of Commerce, our County, which uh, Kathy helped coordinate that. Uh, Northwest Indiana Masks and Anonymous uh, individuals also donated cloth stripper to our service. I just wanted to give a shout out to Rachel in the clerk's office and everybody in the auditor's office for the mobile food delivery program. I'm Rachel's personal food <laughs> delivery guy. <laughs> um, so, no, they're doing a great job, and I think it's great to get out in the community and see these people uh, that truly need this service. And um, they're, they're very thankful for it. Uh, just a couple more quick thank yous. We had a couple of memorial donations. Uh, the family of Gary Wilson and Jerry himself wanted to make sure we were, um, we received some donations when. Uh, he passed recently. Um, and we also had a family of Gary Kersick uh, from Hamlet that donated uh, an amount to us as well. So uh, we want to thank those people and their families. That's just awesome. I know Jerry was on the board for 25 years, part of the Knox Fire Department, all that. Vera, I did not personally know her, but I did know uh, Shirley Kelly, who works at Palaces. Um, it was her mother. And so we thank them uh, for donating to us. And that's all I have. Awesome. So, Great job. Uh, you guys are right on the front lines there, and uh, thank you for everything you do. No problem. Thank you. Um, I think our checks are finally here. Um, I kind of like our friends from the unions who have collectively nope. donated $10,000 would like to have a picture with the commissioner, so I'd like okay. to do that here. We Let there. me get the We're checks. <laughs> I hope not. I hope you guys have a moment where you take them off. Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. You want me to get another guy? Yes, please. Just not allowed to breathe. I'm sorry. Um, Jim, IBW, Jeff. Um, Well, we'll stand up here so we don't have to see the whole desk because we're in the desk. We're having to go all over. These checks are going to be matched dollar for dollar from our grant agency as well. That's so, um, that's awesome. You guys are almost there, right? Is there much more? Did you see that? Can you see it? Can you see it? I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe you help me do it. Come, Come on, come on. 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 Come on.
You have to put it down a little bit. You're trying to cover up my face. Sorry, <laughs> just a short little old lady here. So, did you get it? Okay, good, good, good. So just hold on. You guys are very, very generous, and we. I can't tell you how much we've appreciated that. And uh, uh, we've gotten lots of donations. Uh, our electrical is being donated by one of your union members. And, uh, not yours, maybe he took this uh, it's just incredible, just incredible. Nathan is is uh, donating his time on the project. He's a wonderful kid. Matthew, I have to wait till after your meeting. Take these pictures and then. Oh, okay. I'm trying to get them in here, but I don't know where they're at. Okay. Let me I was trying to get more. help you guys get out of here. So. Yeah, thanks for taking your own pictures, and they'll have to take their own pictures. And the pictures from the uh, groundbreaking ceremony are you can download the, the photographer, put them online. Uh, are they on your site or on KBI, or do you know? Uh, uh, I'll email you the link. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Jamie gets and she donated her time. Oh, so she just did my daughter's on Saturday. Oh, oh did okay. she? Yes. Did she show you the pictures, John? Yeah. Because uh, we had pictures with Marcella in them and the, and whoever was there. H and T, right? Mm -hmm. Is that Bob? Bob was there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Bob Cole was there. So, so and those you can download those for free. Okay. Jamie put them online. I'll email you the link. Yeah, I'd like to have that. Uh, you can because we had this check there too that we did that for and um, and I need mean, to talk with, I'll, I'll, I'll probably talk with Marcella so she can come back to all you guys because collectively your donations exceeded ten thousand dollars which gets you a bench. So how we are going to do that um, yeah we'll talk about you know because different unions gave different amounts so I, I want to make sure everybody's okay with that, that we do one with all your logos and names and stuff on it, and I'll coordinate that with Marcel. That's okay with you guys. But again, I, I uh, we thank you guys very, very much for your contribution. It was wonderful. Wonderful and, and unexpected, too. Uh, <laughs> so so thank you so much. Well, we do have a lot of members that live down here, and a lot of more veterans. I know my dad is a veteran, and uh, so something like this. Thank you so much. I think uh, thank you, John. I like to make sure our community knows what our brothers and sisters from the unions do for communities. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Even if it's round break, it's really nice to hear. Yeah, it's nice. Very nice. Thank you so much. Sorry, check and see if I got a couple. And then Jimmy and those guys from the IEW, they might have to wait a minute. So you're, what, is that okay? If they, if they show up, well, well they're in the we're... parking lot, so I don't know what they're doing. All right, I'll try to get Okay, bye, guys. Thank you, thank you. Thank All right, I'll wait a minute. Let's see if they make it in here. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right, let's see if they know what they're doing. I'm trying to give them a heads up. We're all run down. We've got like a couple weeks in there. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Well, I'm moving pretty fast. Yeah. Uh, we're closing in on that. So, on that $50,000. So, still Mickey? Uh huh. Did you well, yeah, come in? So. Stay here? Yeah, I guess so. Do you want to it's do it pretty well turned out now. I can barely breathe. I have to put my glasses on. So, yeah, come on in. Come on in. Right. We need another picture here. <laughs> <person. laughs> oh, you guys are way over there? We went to the oh, okay. Yeah. You know Kathy, don't you? Yeah. 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 Thank you guys are right here. Thank you very much. And thank you, Mr. Come on over. Come on over here. Must be nice. Hold this up in front of Yes, I got to watch Brian all the time here. So, ready? You guys see Jeff Hamilton out there anywhere? From the sheet metal workers? Uh, no, I put John with that. He might have had to leave. He might have had to.
No, we broke. So you want to do this? Oh, I, I hate it. Well, you you guys, do it? No, 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 And as I said, I, I, I might be repeating myself again, but we do have a $50,000 matching grant. So your dollars that you gave us are going to be matched dollar for dollar from our grants. So uh, we're very excited about that. And uh, we're all, we're closing in on it. We had to raise the entire 50000 in order to get the match. And we're closing right in on it. So. Okay. So today, I mean, it's just look to be accessible. Yeah. So, yeah, so let me tell you something. I don't do anything that doesn't get half the <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, That's what we love about you. Exactly. I make it happen. <laughs> so I was We're really proud well, about this. Yeah. Too. It's going to be amazing. We could never do it. Yeah, we're doing everything without tax dollars. It's yeah. just fantastic. Yeah. I think yeah. it's very, yeah, if, if, if it's going to be real close, you know. Yeah, well, nice. I don't know. It might be close. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you guys, you have, right. you have her. You, does she have your card, Tim and Case? You have to ask them. Yeah. 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 Well, one thing we do <laughs> is this morning, we sometimes oh, delay the yeah. tea for breaks. That's what I'm working on. Can't be found anybody for that. Tim, you know what you do? Yeah. We're going to do that. Oh, Rachel, we'll that, uh, throw that one out. We, 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 we got an electrician from the electrician. <laughs> yeah, Bob, Bob. Yeah. It's a necessity. Yeah. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> Nathan Chambers, it is. carpenter, he, he, he and a local uh, contractor, Doug Allen, is one of our really good. You got that in uh, your budget? One of our local guys, uh, self employed. No. I mean, you pay for it. So we're pretty much. Bench, would you want like you your five thirty one? Is that okay? Would you want each individual union I numbers on there? Or however? Yes. Well, that's well. Might, might be nice. Yeah, it's it's in, you know, each check is it yeah. thing. Did, did both of our checks show up? I know there was, there was three thousand <laughs> total, and it was two separate fifty nine dollar checks. One would have been some like the local one might have been. I'll have to double like check. That. I know I had one. Make sure let me know. I had twenty five hundred from the um, carpenters. Or the uh, building trades, building trades. I mean, and there were there were other checks too. I mean, I was like, wow, wow, wow. Everybody lined up and was handing out checks. I thought, wow, wow. Lord, I'm liking this job. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so. And I told you, I was fully planning on coming down Memorial Day for that service, but then in kind of a roundabout way, I was told that I was possibly in contact with COVID, so I actually went and got tested. I just had to have my results. Oh. I didn't want to even come down here and until I knew. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's negative, but I was just being. Well, that is know, the one thing I'm worried about with this. Uh, 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 mm -hmm. Jim Pressel has had this in mind. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was a sunny day with a nice breeze, though. Yeah. So yeah. Like I said, I didn't want to take any chances. You know, I was just being sensitive to all that. Thank you. Thank you. It was a beautiful day. Those pictures are online. I'll email the link to Marcella. She supports you can download them. So they can choose when you get for free. All of those for free. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, or you can order them. Uh, but Jamie, who did the uh, photographs, also donated those money. Uh, 
uh, for that. So, I mean, yeah. we've been blessed with yeah. donations. Lots of support. Yes, yes. Is that where it's going? Where I see they pushed all yes. the dirt on the southeast yes. side? So right moving it. It. Yes, uh, they had to take up the limestone uh, uh, pieces that were holding the lawn back, and um, because those are uh, historic for the building. So, um, and it'll be excavated so it's um, being accessible to the curb when it's not. But we're really excited about it. And we will also, on Veterans Day, we plan to have a dedication ceremony. And hopefully, we, you know, depending on what's going on with this COVID thing or not, hopefully we can get on that. Yeah. And so we certainly would like for you all to attend that. So yeah. we'll, we'll keep, I'll keep you updated. Yeah. More, so. yeah. But again, we can't thank you enough for your contribution. Mm -hmm. Pleasure. Pleasure. Thank, thank you guys for taking it on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will let we'll you know. Right. Thank you. Take care, Thank you. Well, I guess we can uh, resume our meeting. I, I uh, just wanted to get them going so they didn't have to stay. Uh, so next is Rick. I'm going to sit back here because I have some questions. That's okay. Yes. All right, um, we're back to the summer operations. About two weeks ago, we got back to full staff. Um, we're kind of reacclimating everyone for the first couple of weeks. We kept them away from each other. We're still doing that, obviously. Um, we are opening the 13th during the day. Um, <coughs> so we have the work board. As you know, I do most of the planning and administrative work. Dale is responsible for getting the operations done. So let's go through this quickly. Bridge number seven is in design that will be on the Yellow River on 1200 East. That will be less next year, 2021, and construction next year. Bridge 137, which we just got a big grant for last year, that will be then we're selecting a consultant, and that will be uh, constructed in 2022, possibly 2021. Okay, you may let us move that up and get the design done quickly. Uh, bridge cleaning and brush cutting. We cleaned all 57 bridges this last month. It's very important, as you know, to get the chlorides off the bridges in the winter and keep the bridges in much better shape than that's done every year with regard to long term maintenance. It uh, costs much less, and bridge cleaning is very easy, just some water and air, air always very less. So we do that every year, every spring. Culvert inspections will be done when the water goes down a little bit. That will allow us to decide which culvert we need to clean later. Iroquois State Road 23 drainage up there has been a problem for the last couple of years. We would have done that these last couple of weeks, but we're doing the, the uh, courthouse instead. Now that we're just about done with our part of that, we're going to go through this next week. We'll get that drainage problem in the last or a big drainage problem. Just in time problem. for the KLA's annual meeting yes. on the 20th and yes. my very last meeting there. So yeah, we'll probably be doing that either later this week or I need my roads for them. Yeah. Uh, Culvert replacements. We had eight scheduled at the beginning of the year. We're going to do more, obviously, when we do the, the culvert inspections. We've completed six ourselves. The other two are being done through the survey office working with us. Um, one thing we were concerned about is we lost the main operator a month ago. And you guys are actually working out pretty well, and uh, we're happy with it. And very happy with the projects that he's making. Uh, uh, Pazer rating, we did that already. That's required by LTAP. Road work 50 South is uh, about 90% done. They have to put the shoulder work down. Shoulder stone, other than that, the paving itself is done. And it looks good. It's, uh, it will be a good alternative to Total Road coming from North Jefferson. We're hoping it reduces the traffic on Total Road because Total Road is the most accident prone road in the county. Um, the next two projects, which were let community crossings grant projects, um, Range Road and 250 North will be done in late July, early August. We'll be doing some of the shoulder work in early July and then the patient Creek Riley will be doing that in August. Uh, one thing we've been able, we kind of read, read on our schedule this year. We're bringing more paving and six cents on the end of the year so we so we'll know how much money we have. Um, so we've been able to do, use some of the grindings we had last year and put them on gravel roads and reshape gravel roads. We've done 27 miles. We're hoping to do about 50 miles of those this year. The good news about using the grindings is we won't have to do dust control. Those asphalt grindings, the dust doesn't come up through those. It's much better. Um, we found that we may just use all of that. We had all those roads from 35 and 23 last year. We're getting right into date. State Road 10 this year. We're still going to use some of those to pave with, but we're going to maybe do most of our gravel roads with those right in. It should improve all our gravel roads. That's a good thing. Um, like I said, the other paving, the chips here are delayed a little bit. Uh, the crosswalk at Lower Shores, we've delayed that a little because of our sign, one side man was out. 
going to be starting to do that this week. Hope the lower shores are like that. Um, mowing, we're about done with, uh, about halfway done with our first round of mowing throughout the county. We'll also start brush cutting. We've completed all our summer patch with two big piles of patch that will last us all summer. We use a little bit smaller stone this year. The drivers really like that. They say it compacts a lot better. We get that on sale. They called us up on the forest, called us that they had on sale, so we decided to do that. Save some money, and it looks like we got better patch that way. Always a good thing. Uh, grant applications. Um, I want to let you know we've received about three million dollars in grants in the last year and a half. We have maximized our ability to match with our budget for the next two years. That's basically it. So we, I'm going to still apply for grants, but I may have to ask you guys for money to match that. We've not had to ask for money in seven years, but if we get an 80-20 match, that's worth it. So I'm going to still apply for that. So we have maxed that out. So it's a very good thing. We got a million dollars in community crossing grant in the spring. There may not be much community crossing grant money in the fall. So that's why we always want to maximize that. We were one of the lucky ones that got our whole million dollars at the beginning. So some of the people who were waiting or didn't get the whole thing may not get as much. As Jim Preston was saying the other day. Um, trainings, we're doing a little bit different training now. We normally go to training conferences and we're also having some training. LTAP trainings here in Stark County. We're going to switch those to video conferences. LTAP's working with us on that. Uh, facility upgrades, as you can get to the uh, garage lately, you've seen that our inside is almost done. Our next big project is to, in the next couple of years, is to get a um, natural gas generator for the entire garage. So the power goes down, we can continue running, and we've needed that for some years now. Um, so basically, everything's going. It looks like we'll be able to do a full work schedule. We've got about 30 miles done, four miles of, uh, it's going to be about 14 miles of hot mix paving this year. So that means our hot mix uh, 10 year plan will be ahead of schedule. That will be a good thing. We may make 90 miles like we did that last season without the less money. All right, so um, we read gravel road applications. They were due today. We received two, and we're supposed to get a third one today. We will be reviewing them and presenting to you guys for those who are being selected for next year. We already selected this year, not, it's not on applications. I talked to you, Ryan, on a couple of those communities and a couple others that are going to be done this year. Uh, so we're very excited about that gravel road upgrade application. And we, some people may not want, once they get these grindings on the road, they may not want to get their road upgrade, especially not as a dust control better, so that may save that as well. Veterans Memorial work, we just basically finished our part of the uh, excavation this morning. We may have to do a little bit more. I have to talk to Bob O'Loy and Bob Torba about that. We did most of the work that was done. Uh, we will be continuing to be here and provide labor for it. And uh, go to the meetings, but our part, our main part is just about done. We're very happy to do that. Thank you. Thank you so much. We spoke about the community crossings already. Wow. Roadway funding is where the other comes in. We received about 3% less in May than we did in 2020 and 2020 than we did in 2019. That's echoing to 2019. And if you look at our first chart, that's the uh, reduction in traffic both from March through May. You see the dip is coming back up actually from May to June 1st, that's starkly going up here. So we're back, basically back up to our, our normal level. That dip is our delay in funding from the gas tax is about three months delay. So it just started in March, so that's why we only had affected a little bit in May. So that's three percent. We are expecting up to 40 percent reduction for the next three months. We can handle that, still do that without you know doing our free production. If any more than that, we may have to shift things down a little bit. But, uh, we are prepared for that. Uh, okay. The next one, next page, we have submitted our 2021 budget. We are proud of the fact that we have not had to ask you guys for any money in the last seven years outside our budget. In order to continue that, we have to reduce for next year because we are anticipating a reduction as is all, all the funds. I submitted the budget to Rachel last week. Um, it's a reduction of 5.83% overall. That's $221,000. If we do that, we think we can do that for another year. If we had to do that a second year, we would have to reduce production a little bit. We can probably maintain the same production by doing that next year, but simply that's why the asset management's been so helpful in that. I'll explain that next month when I do a presentation on that. But if we had to do that in 2022 and the economy, the economy didn't get better in 2021, we may have to shift things around in 2022. But this, this right here will allow us to maintain our production, but yet stay within our budget. So about, like I said, $221,000. It's basically five years to come instead of doing a couple other things that will allow us to do We don't want to do that in the long term, but in the short term, we can handle that. That's the plan as well. All right. 
We just turned in our annual reports. Uh, actually, finalized it today. That requires that you have to have that in each year for um, to get more funding, grant funding. The most important columns, if you look on this next page here, are motor vehicle highway, motor vehicle highway restricted. As you know, Jim Presser was talking about the other day when he asked me about this. We, we have to do at least 50% of our budget, the MBH budget has to be an MBH restricted. There are only certain things that can be spent that way, but it's difficult. And I, I guess he was talking with us. We've done it this year. We're only about probably about 54, 55% of that. It's very difficult to do. That's why we had to have the extra office position. I putting together an email that you guys will be CC'd on all the things we think need to be changed. I think LTAP, instead of the legislature saying 50%, I think the LTAP local transportation assistance program, which works with us every day, and have a better handle on how we spend that money well. I think they need to work with the legislature in doing that such can be my recommendation. Uh, that has been a big problem for all highway departments. And, but as the uh, representative of press is very aware of that, I hope they can do the help us on that. At least since, all right, so, uh, Bridget, I want to do that. Okay, Constellation of Stark, Stellar Communities. As you know, we uh, were runners up last year. We received $332,000. That is continuing that program. We are getting that money. Uh, we have narrowed it down to basically one project that encompasses four different communities. It's um, Bass Lake Restroom, Max Park Shelter, Prince Lake Restroom, North Church and Restroom. And those, the, the OCR is going to, looks like they're going to allow us to combine those things into one project. It's a good thing. We will worry about that a little bit. Uh, there are two projects here that will require a county grant uh, match at the Bass Lake Trailhead and the North Jefferson uh, restroom. I've attached uh, plans for those. Those are just concept drawings, which probably will change uh, when it comes about. Uh, one concern for some people that was the overflow parking area for the launch at Bass Lake. Uh, right now, about six or seven trailers and, and trucks can park there because they kind of park really nilly when they do that. This will be much more organized. We'll have about 10 spots there. So if someone's concerned about the overflow parking, just tell them it'll be more organized and there'll be more parking. Um, we may reduce some of the area and uh, we just took the office off the building and we just left the restrooms. The one good thing this does here, the old road used to come in at an angle of 210, 450. That's now going to curve and it'll be a, a 90 degree angle, which is much safer for roadway departure. So that's another thing in this project that's a, a big deal. Uh, so the, the county maps will be. Um, about 39,600, I believe. That's the county portion? Yeah, 39,600. Now, Bass Lake committed to, Bass Lake Property are committed to doing some of the match. Um, it was about $15,000, or ten or fifteen. I'm going to reduce that. I'm talking to them. If we can get about five or $10,000 from them for the match, we're working on that. I believe they'll be receptive for that because they like this project, they want this project. And also, there's a couple private donors that may do that too. So we need a commitment for you guys for at least 39600 but it could probably, most likely, be less. So you want us to, uh, but we'll have to go to the council because we'll have to take that from economic development funds. So, um, and I didn't bring my fund balances with me, but. Uh, uh, the roadway part of the seat it had enough in there if you want to use that. The deadline's coming up on yeah, this. Yeah, that's why we need to do that. Sure. Sure. It, it, aren't they always? But, you know, not to stop spending money, but to be able to make our, we need to be able to make our. Uh, yes, our well, certainly I, I want us to make sure that we can maximize our, I mean, we knew that we had to provide a match at, um, at some point. So um, this is what I'll do. I'll make a motion that we approve the, or, well, I guess, I get, well, I can make a motion. <laughs> I'll make a motion that we um, approve the thirty nine thousand six hundred uh, as as the match, which may be less, um, and the fund fund or funds that it's to become to come from that needs to be determined. Second. Have enough appropriation this year for that? Uh, just enough that we pay for the other project. I mean that money's already appropriated. You don't have to go to the council for it. I like that. We do the roadway seat it, and then uh, which is already appropriated, and you have the funds to be able to do that. Okay, that's great. My suggestion would be that, uh, uh, for example, Knox will take control of the Wyfogan Park Shelter, Coons Lake will take, I'm assuming, the 
I don't know who it foods like, but uh, I'm, with, uh, Robin Lloyd said it was the uh, Foods Like Operators Association and the Lions Club together. We're going to take control of that and take care That's of that. Opinion. North Judson will take care of theirs, of course. So the Bass Lake one, uh, you know, I don't know if you if they want to consider that under the jurisdiction of the Park Board at some point, or I mean, or the or a uh, or the it's not actually Park Board property. Yeah, it's, it's county road. It's county road. It's all right away. It's actually county road. Right so right. it would be under the county's jurisdiction. As of now. As of now. As of now. Right. I mean, that part of the Park Board. I mean, it, it probably makes sense to to transfer it at some point, but I mean, it actually hasn't happened yet. But. Would that be my suggestion that um, um, uh, that it be, and I say that knowing or expecting and in, in anticipation that I'm going to have an appointment to the park board in my retirement. So, you know, so I got to make sure I have plenty of work to do, Brian. Okay. So we'll keep you busy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it makes sense to me that that would be where you'd want to put something like that. So I, I don't. I, you know, I, 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 there was. I saw one. Mostly we've had positive ones. I didn't see one question that was raised about this, uh, about uh, why this is funded and, you know, when, you know, hunting and fishing is, generates like most of the revenue. And just, just to respond to that, I think that was sort of a reasonable uh, query. The FET funding goes to DNR and not to the county or, or to the OCRA in any way. So that, you know, anybody that has that kind of Feeling, I think that's legitimate, and I think they they should address that the DNR and maybe ask for some improvements. We certainly have some areas in the county that would benefit from some DNR investment. So uh, I, you know, I guess I'm not disagreeing well, with them. I'm just saying, to go to DNR and try to get them to do some things. I think that would be great. We definitely support that. And one of the concerns in that complaint was not enough parking there. Right. There actually will be right. standard parking, much safer parking when that happens. So we've got our match taken care of. No, no, but thank you. I mean, obviously when you take a look at at uh, the forms that have been completed, the spreadsheets, the uh, graphs, I mean, uh, uh, we need somebody at the highway garage that's better than a, a shade yard mechanic. And um, fortunately we've got Rick to as uh, far as I'm concerned, the best highway superintendent we've ever had. So. It's changed, the highway work has changed and become more professional. I've done that throughout mm -hmm. all the county and all the things are going through that transition. Mm -hmm. And I'll talk about that more next month and I'll explain to you guys what we've done in the last seven years in that regard and why it's so good for the Well, the fact that you Well, the fact that you were able to maximize our uh, community crossings grant. Um, it's always a good problem to have, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So we appreciate that very much. So thank you. Um, I guess we can probably talk about this. This is an agreement that Community Service wants us to sign. That which I don't that we're we're given ten thousand dollars. I don't think we need to sign that agreement. First of all, it's a gift. It's not a if we choose to give it to them, we can give it to them. If we don't choose to give it to them, we don't have to give it to them. So I'm not inclined to sign any kind of agreement for that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then I'll make that motion that we do not need to sign this agreement. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Which I think that's on the claim too, isn't it? Okay, well, then that'd be the next thing we need to uh, discuss is the $10,000 that is on the vendor claims. I'd like to um, uh, hold, at a minimum, hold it. Um, um, I'm not so sure, you know, that we shouldn't be using that for our food service program. Um, so, you know, it, it, uh, there's been costs associated with it. Uh, you know, it's gone over very well. We don't know if we're going to have more COVID problems down the road. Um, and this would go towards transportation or something if we wanted to uh, uh, deny that claim and save it for the COVID or uh, we could give it to them. I mean, what do you think, Brian? 
I think hold it for now. Be good. Is that a motion? I'll okay. uh, second it. All in favor say aye. 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 So we're going to hold that indefinitely. Um, so uh, given that, uh, is there a motion to approve the claims docket less the uh, 10,000 to the community? So moved. Second. And the motion carries. I guess we don't have, so it's one of us motion, one of us second, we don't have to really. Uh, six one today, June first, right? Yeah. And um, I guess for the record, the uh, grand total, which is less than ten thousand dollars, is two hundred and eighty thousand five hundred ninety eight dollars and fifty four cents. And the uh, payroll docket is in the amount of eighty. Uh, two hundred sixty-nine thousand nine hundred and sixty-three dollars and sixty-six cents. Is there a motion to approve? Yeah, make that motion. Second. And the motion carries. Um, and then the minutes from the May 11th meeting, which was our last meeting, uh, we need a motion to approve. A second, and the motion carries. And the low financial software upgrade request which is $3,308. And it's for our server license and our uh, 50 user upgrade licenses. I don't think we have a choice. Yeah, make that motion. Uh, second and uh, uh, motion carries. Chair, you're you're here to talk to us, right? Yes. Come on up. Come on up. The table the um, request that we have put in uh, for the uh, salvage vehicles. I brought Danny Janiszewski with him. He's with Custom Motors. He does all of our body work uh, for deer accidents and collisions and accidents and whatnot. Uh, he would be the one that this is granted. He would be the one who would be replacing the parts on the vehicles. Um, there is some, I guess, discussion that uh, these vehicles um, are total with frame damage and whatnot. That's not the vehicles we're buying. Uh, they're just cosmetic uh, fenders, bumpers, airbags, things like that. Um, nothing with frame damage or flood damage or electric. Um, nothing like that. And they are just as safe as the vehicles that we have, actually. They'd probably be better than the ones we have. We have uh, 13 vehicles. Uh, 10 of them have over 140,000 miles on them. So, I mean, uh, and we're buying low, low mile vehicles. So would salvage vehicles be safer than the uh, high mileage vehicles? I mean, I mean, here's well, my, and I did email Pam uh, that I was concerned about it. Um, and, there, as long as uh, Danny's excellent at what he does, as long as he uh, has them back together, I don't see any problem at all. And you can get vehicles with less miles. And yeah, the, the good side of this is we could replace probably four vehicles with the money if that's allowed, uh, rather than getting just two. Um, one of the vehicles that we have now, we just had uh, one of them break down again last night. It's the third time. Uh, and it's got 160 some thousand on it's an SUV. Um, we, we need to find a way to try to get the best bang for our buck, and I think that this is the best way. Me being the sheriff, I would never put my road guys in jeopardy 
to have them drive an unsafe vehicle. I would never do that. Um, I, I just think that these vehicles are probably just as good as the vehicles you're buying off the lot. Has the insurance company been? Yeah, did you, you contact contacted Cherry? Cherry. Uh, Cherry. Not, you know, we want to make sure that we sure. have a record that we contacted and they approved them. So, you know, sure. I don't think, actually, I don't expect that to be a problem. I contacted her, Marty, probably two or three months ago when we first started um, getting this discussion going. Uh, she said that as long as the vehicle is operable and it cleared the inspection, that they would insure it. Okay. Um, I could get that documented for you. Yeah, you probably ought to have something yeah. in the file. I, I don't doubt that really. I thought I knew that's the, that's the biggest issue. If they're happy with it, sure. Well, that's the main thing. Yeah. Yeah. What's the What? What? Uh, what? Uh, what? What? Well, um, here's kind of what I'd like to do. I'd like to make sure Charlie's available, you know, so all three commissioners, plus we want documentation from Carrie. And if I, I missed the last meeting because my internet connection failed. And I, I mean, I want to make sure you have this, the equipment you need. Don't misunderstand me. I want you to have what you need to do your job. Um, I think that's important. And uh, obviously vehicles are, are, are one of them. But I'd like to have the, the documentation from Carrie, first of all. And if I'm not mistaken, because I did uh, uh, watch the tape afterwards, it was uh, the suggestion was to put it to CUNY CAP, pay for it out of CUNY CAP. And I'd rather, because I was looking at the money that was appropriated through there, I'd rather send it to JLC to the GLC has got way more money than we've got in QCAP. Do you have any objections to that? No. So can we um, table this to the next meeting when Charlie can be here? Because I'd like all three of us to be present. And with the idea that instead of paying, you get the thing from Carrie, that she'll insure them. And, uh, maybe a statement from him that there's okay to use or I don't know you know I well, I, I just I just want to be comfortable sure. with, with it is all I'm not trying to give you a hard time by no, any no, means. I understand. Um, you know I want the sheriff's department to have what they need um, I, I again I, I there's a lot of misconceptions with the salvage vehicle mm -hmm. um, obviously there's some turds out there yeah. uh, and we're, Danny won't Danny knows what he's doing I uh, trust him uh, with everything that we take to him um, Danny would not let us do that. He's a taxpayer here. I, I, I take pride in his work and his name. So I don't know. I've already paid. Maybe we're going to buy anyway. Mm -hmm. I actually pulled the sheriff's department. Is anything now? No. If we could table it till the next meeting, we'll chart, theoretically, when Charlie's going to be here. I mean, I hope he's here. And uh, get a statement from Carrie and uh, switch the payment to the jail seat instead okay. of. Yeah. Well, what is that? Two weeks? Yeah. Is that okay? I, no, no, yeah, that's fine. I, I, just, I just want to remind you guys last time when we ordered brand new vehicles, it took nine months. Remember, we done yeah. it like in March and it didn't come until the beginning of the year. Yeah, I remember. Um, just got to jump through hoops and everything. I think this would be a lot faster. Well, mm -hmm. I want to, if we can save money, I mean, I want to save money and I want the sheriff's department to have with, but I also want the safety. Yeah. Feature too. Absolutely. So and um, I do too. I would never put my guys in a vehicle that I. I guess that sounds kind of bad for me to say. I'm no. concerned that somebody get hurt and and infer that the sheriff wouldn't care if they get hurt. And I, I'm not trying to say that at all either. I. Oh, that, that's a it's a valid concern, and I I, I have no problem with being questioned about that. I I would never jeopardize our employees. Or I and I know that. I, I didn't think we were fair. Okay. Okay. So are you okay with that, Bill? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, also, um, in the past, we have um, we've used a remember that car that we bought from the insurance that was told vaguely. Uh, yes. Was that two years ago, probably? Yeah, yeah. two years ago. Anyway, it had like three thousand miles on it. You guys allowed us to buy the vehicle, and we kept it at Danny's place, and we stripped that vehicle, took the every part off of it. And reused it back on other vehicles. We used the motor, transmission, um, the interior, airbags, uh, everything. Um, what I'm asking is um, rather than turn some of these cars back in, kind of 
pick and choose which ones, um, maybe the worst ones of, of the, the group, and use that as a body vehicle that we can take the, you know, for deer accidents and whatnot, take the hood off the fender, um, maybe the push bar and little stuff like that. It would save us in the road, down the road. I think it's a good idea. Um, it, it really saved us probably 10 grand. Uh, I know that motor was probably five or six thousand alone because of the miles on it. But um, Danny's got the, uh, you know, a vehicle right there. He can interchange the parts and they are the same color and whatnot. Okay. Okay. It's already used. Okay. They talk about speed too. Part of there, I can put them a lot faster. Just help us out in the past. So. Just trying to think of ways that we can obviously save money and do it the right way. So. I guess I'd make that as a motion table it till the next meeting. Um, yeah, the insurance state or insurance from Carrie Black yep. again. Uh, switch. I had it through a text message the last time I had texted her. Okay. I'll do this through an email and okay. I'll just copy all the text. Okay. okay. And, and switch it to JLC. That uh, they, like I say, they got tons of money there. So. Okay. okay. Motion carries. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Um, next one is uh, finding a fact from the Thomas Ticola claim on behalf of our gentle LLC. Um, do you want me to read this into the record, Marty, or would you like to read it? Into the record, I don't think. Okay. If you want to, um, it could be read into the record. I don't think it's necessary. Okay. Uh, but the, the biggest issue, of course, is that um, the, you know, the Charlie's not here. The two, so the Brian and Charlie, the ones that voted for it. And now I don't think there's anything wrong with you voting for it, uh, you know, because it's a separate action. He did file an appeal, I mean, not an appeal, but a claim there on that one. But uh, he filed a claim, and this is partly in response to that. But I think it still would be good, uh, since we don't really have any deadline on at this point, to uh, get uh, also to have Charlie vote on it as well. And then, so, so the two of you could it, go ahead, or you could or table, table it to the next meeting. Yeah, table it to the next meeting, probably, because it you know, you really should have Brian and Charlie since they're the two that voted yeah. for the action. I'd say we yeah, should just table it then, yeah, if there's so. no yeah. deadline. No, there's no deadline it's, you know, at this so point. I think he, didn't he raise the concern that because Kathy got off of it? Oh, it's everything's, you know, where he, of course, he raises yeah. everything, but. I mean, which is, you know, which is what you do. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, true, but um, anytime we do anything, I know. yeah, <laughs> but, but, but I just want to make it clear, you know, I, you know, there, there were a couple of issues that I want, felt were important to make clear, which, you know, for those being um, that, uh, you know, that you didn't rely on the remonstrance in your decision and that you don't have to, you know, the key ones. And, and I wanted to cite the, the case that uh, that I advised you on the basis of. And one other thing, I, well, if you don't mind, uh, we also have this proclamation. I think you could go ahead and do that if you want. So, and, and I would like to record this in in the uh, with a with an affidavit, probably with Charlie, to say that he, you know. Uh, Sign this, and that would make it a recordable document. It would be in a permanent record. Uh, the dedication would actually, you know, turn up in, in the title of that property. Um, and I think you can go ahead and do that because he's already signed it. So the two of you can just approve it, and then uh, I, you know, and, and authorize him. Yeah, authorize okay. him to uh, this, uh, execute a document, and I can record it. Authorize me to record it. This was um, Charlie's. Uh, proclamation of consecration and dedication of the site for the Veterans Memorial, and uh, he read that as you uh, heard heard in, into the record at the groundbreaking ceremony, and I printed it on parchment, acid-free parchment paper, and he signed it. So um, I and it was it's very eloquent and, and well written, and um, will be important for our history. Down the road from now, um, and I um, did order uh, one of the coffee table books that um, uh, Jane, Jamie makes, or that was an option you could buy. So, which had all the pictures, and uh, we're going to put some of these things in the glass display case, I think, in the courthouse, um, and then eventually, I'm thinking they should be donated to the historical society. And I like the idea of getting it recorded for posterity and. Uh, I agree. We should have it recorded. Yeah. So that's motion. Motion. Uh, second now. Mm -hmm. 
Charlie said he wished he had read that before he got up. He didn't. <laughs> he said he didn't. He just like went off so something. Well, I would have to. Teach well, it's a little him, flowery, <laughs> probably, but it's a little flowery than Charlie is. Uh, yeah. For his yeah. Play, the plane talking kind of guy. Um, Marty, are you here? Do you have a question or a comment? No, I'm just listening. Okay. Um, since it just reminded me that we do have a uh, um, a vacancy on the uh, hospital board. Um, that we need to fill. And I have had a couple people contact me about that already uh, with some interest and it does need to be a Democrat uh, during Wilson when he passed. And uh, um, I'm, I'll have to look up to see what the remainder of his term is, but um, I'd like that to be on our next agenda. And um, I hope the press that's listening can mention that in their news report that we'll be looking to fill a his spot, which is a Democrat position. So, um, I don't have anything else, I don't think. Um, what was the date that they're reopening the office? 15th of June. 15th of mm -hmm. June. Which coincides with the states. Okay. Um, you know, you get asked so many questions. There's been so many dates and things going on. It's like mm -hmm. uh, I'm starting to get lost. Yeah. All the that's employees. In our order. Be, I mean, it, that's in our. That's actually in our orders. Yeah, yeah that is official. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, 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 I think people with a um, an appointment can come in. Uh, they have a compelling reason, and uh, and as we have a public meeting here, um, I see a Bernadette. Uh, <laughs> I remember Bernadette wants to talk to. Uh, she has some comments to make about the election, and um, you're, go ahead. Okay, sorry, I had to unmute it. Um, with the riots going on, um, I'm not sure what to expect. I have seven inspectors that are going to be in charge of seven different polling locations. Thank goodness it's only seven and not 21. Um, I, I, want to truly believe that we don't will not have an issue here in Stark County, but I want to speak with the sheriff today as well as the chief of police in Knox and at least have a plan in place of something does happen tomorrow. Um, again, I want to stress I don't think we will have an issue, but I want to be prepared if we do have an issue. Um, I don't know if you commissioners have any words of advice for me. Um, of course, we're all walking on, on untethered waters with Corona and the, the election being in June instead of in May. Um, but I, I really truly wanna believe we will not have a problem, but I want to be prepared if we do happen to have issues tomorrow. Um, as one of the inspectors, I, I um, have attended all the trainings for that you've provided for the uh, judges, the clerks, and the inspectors, uh, just to make sure I was familiar with all the processes. And I want to say, Bernadette, I think you've done an excellent, excellent job um, with this, you and your, your election board. And um, hopefully Thanks. things will be smooth tomorrow. And... Uh, I have a hotline to your number if I need it. So <laughs> that's what we're here for. That's what we want the inspectors to do. Is that it for you, Bernadette? That's it. If okay. June 15th. Well, the judge may uh, uh, may want, he's free to do whatever he wants. He's a separate branch of government. Um, all I can tell you is that on June 15th, the state is opening up. That was their recommendation that offices be open. That's when they're opening their offices. So the commissioners uh, decided to mirror the state um, in every respect. So, so now they're having more problems than they um, I think the governor's been pretty um, open about uh, the riots and what's going on down there. And he did issue an order over the weekend that allows 
local leaders, county commissioners uh, to uh, make adjustments based on those kinds of things if they need to in terms of uh, police presence, et cetera, et cetera. We're very fortunate here in Stark County. We don't have those kinds of things. If he decides to keep his offices closed because of riots down there, that does not affect us. And I would expect him to say, local leaders, you can, you, you know, th these are the COVID guidelines and these are the um, uh, riot guidelines. And uh, you're free to choose how you want to. I have every expectation that we're going to open up our offices to the public on June 15th. In the meantime, I believe they can make um, uh, appointments uh, if they need them. And um, like we're having a public meeting here and I did make sure the officer out there realized that this is a public meeting. It's advertised a public meeting and you can't keep people out of the public meeting. So um, again, uncharted territories, we're doing the best we can with what we have to deal with. So. Anything else, Brian? Marty, Rachel, again, great job that you've been doing. Uh, proud of you. Uh, you've been doing great. Right. And great job to you, too. Uh, you've been busy, uh, and uh, we appreciate everything you've done. We're uh, fortunate to have you. We've got some really good department heads here, and I certainly have you up on that list of, of top-notch department heads. So thank you for your services. Uh, anything from you, sir? Motion to adjourn. Anything else from anybody else that's on the call? I see Michelle's on there, uh, Mandy and Dave. Motion to adjourn. Second, we're, we're adjourned. Oh, dang it, I tell you, I'm just excited to talk about it.